We got a Boom Boom Prime here, ladies and gentlemen. Left left side of Atlanta Spaceship. He is the pink Zerg here in for Prime now after MKP got taken out by this guy. TSL symbol, the blue Zerg up on the top spawn of Atlantis Spaceship. Yeah, I mean, these teams are not messing around. I mean, Marine King was thrown in first for Prime. Then we had Symbol come in from TSL. So they wanted to make sure that they knocked out their aces very, very quickly. But uh, now we have Pum Pum, who's kind of been the go-to Zerg player for Prime. Uh, he and Young have both put on some very, very good games. But uh, Pum Pum's been a little bit more consistent overall, uh, not just in Team League, but also in tournament play as well. I do like the Boom Boom Prime's nickname on the forums. It's just 4B. Yeah. And I'm like, 4B? What is, oh, okay. Yes, Because B, there's B, four B, B, Bs. B. Yes. yes. It's but like you can't a, fit that. All the all the Prime players, or a good portion of the Prime players, have extremely long <laughs> names when you include Prime as well, so. Yeah. And, well, that's because Prime can't really be shortened to, like, P. Right. Unless you're MKP. Unless you're ranking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then if MKP joins another team, it's just going to confuse everyone forever. Yes. He should just keep his name ranking prime dot acer or whatever <laughs> whoever he joins. I think we'll just call him uh, pung pung dot P again. Yep. Or we can just call him BBBBP. Does, it, does that work? That probably works. Yeah. All right. And then if, if StarCraft's ever on BBC, he could be BBBBP on BBC. Yes. And I'm okay with that. That'd be good for IPL. Yes. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, 4B reminds me, of, reminds me of CP3, uh, Chris Paul yes. from, from the Hornets. That's that's a fact. A, a, a fine bowler as well. Yeah. So oh, yeah, of course. He's, he's actually a PBA super ambassador. big bowler. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the funniest series, if you guys have a chance, you should watch the Chris and Chris videos that the PBA put out for a while. It's like horribly stilted. Like You have Chris Paul and Chris Barnes, who is a very, yeah. very one of the best bowlers in the world. They're sitting next to each other. He's like, hi, I am Chris Barnes. And... How are you doing, Chris Paul? And Chris Paul's like, hi, Chris Barnes. I'm doing fine. They're, Let's bowl. Yes, <laughs> they're, they're horrible videos. And I am a super competitive bowler, but I uh, uh, can't watch them. <laughs> Hatch first coming up for both players, followed by pools and gas. Um, not too much of a surprise so far for both of these guys as... Um, I believe, let's see here, yeah, it was actually gas before pool for Pung Pung, so we should have his 100 gas just in time to get circling speed right away. It was the other way around for Symbol, though, as he'll invest in two queens before circling speed. All right, and as ZVZs unfold, we usually don't have a whole lot to say as, you know, basically both players are going to get their units out on the field. We'll see, you know, various quantities of lings, various quantities of queens, maybe a spine crawler here or there, but basically it takes a long time for these players to get uh, into their comfortable builds. We do have hatchery is finishing up now for both sides and uh, basically yeah we just kind of sit back and wait for the fireworks to start I mean sometimes baneling nests uh, will will spring up early and we'll get a couple of uh, crazy trade-offs you know one for one three for one two for one and it's it's always it always seems to be equitable in the end like sometimes you get one big baneling blast but usually it's like you know two for one two for one something like that and it just trades along this was an interesting map choice though it is loser picks format so Marine King went down prime Senate not just the player but they chose the map as well. And Pum Pum decided to pick Atlanta's spaceship this early. It's not usually a map you see picked this early, and it is the biggest of the two-player maps that we have. I actually think it may, with the exception, I, I think Whirlwind is a bit bigger now, but uh, I, I think this one still is just one of our largest overall maps. Uh, so it's pretty easy to pull off um, higher tech strategies here and be really, really minimal in your bailing defense. Go up to Mutalisk a bit quicker, maybe go straight into Roach and Fester and just play towards the late game. Uh, of course, both players are putting up their bailing nests just to make sure they stay safe, but... Uh, you know, we could see a nice, long, high-tech ZVZ. It's it's interesting to me. You bring up the point about maps. Obviously, they, they tend to put the maps uh, that they're most comfortable with first. So it seems like Daybreak, Cloud Kingdom, and Ohana uh, tend to hit, hit the floor first. And watching, uh, actually, the uh, WCS Europe finals, watching the live, like, pick bands sort of thing on stage that yeah. uh, like Stefano and Vortex were picking for ZVZ. They were eliminating maps. They eliminated, uh, they didn't eliminate Teldrum Alter actually and that ended up being an insane game in the first set. But like just, just watching them pick their maps, uh, it seems like obviously they, they just, they don't care what the opponent likes. They only want to play what they like. Even right. if even if it's the best map for both of them, they got to be comfortable. So I'm really curious if in the Premier League or even Contender uh, Division, if uh, 
if players are going to be preparing snipers on the new maps, Kedaria and Whirlwind, Kedaria was the first map for the first week of games, but it won't be uh, for next week. So it will right. be, you know, it's one of those maps that you could throw in at any time and be like, here's our Terran player on Kedaria. Hope you're ready. Right. And they're just like, well, I don't, you know, maybe if that player does study up the map and f find some weak points and stuff like that, it could actually be a huge, huge benefit we for these teams. Yeah, we saw Stanchorn Mist use much the same yeah. way in Team Arena Challenge 3 when every once in a while, every few weeks, you'd have someone jump in with an ultra aggressive build that was designed specifically for uh, Sanchor and Miss. Uh, so Pung Pung and Symbol, as a matter of fact, are both going after pretty high gas layer tech pretty early on. No Roach Warrens out of either of these guys quite yet. So, uh, but there's plus one missile attacks already for Symbol. So he's going to go down Roach and Fester, it appears. Uh, Pung Pung, on the other hand, decided to go two gas, no quad gas, but uh, no evolution chamber, nothing else. So probably a Spire from him. I like the single unit on the minimap that's right on the bear's nose to light it up and actually make it look like a bear's nose. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Appreciate thanks that. for that symbol, but uh, <laughs> that's that's funny to me. Uh, anyway. Yeah, it is Spire Tech actually coming out for uh, for Pung Pung at the moment. Yeah. And putting, I, I love when players put their Spires in kind of creative places. It's not really blocking his gas, but it kind of makes it look like a Spore Crawler or a Spine Crawler if you're just glossing over it. And uh, as I mentioned before, it is going to be Roach and Fester for symbol, and it is going to be Spire Tech for Pung Pung. Very interesting. So it is going to come down to those Infestors for sure uh, to start things off. Oh wow, boy. big blasts there, uh, taking out a bunch of lings, but still kind of an equitable trade. Symbol actually with a lot more lings than a Boom Boom Prime at the moment. He's going to continue chasing those down in this kind of tug of war across uh, both ends. And wow, is Boong actually going to lead him straight over to that hatchery and say, here, I'm building a hatchery. Why don't you make me cancel it? And that may exactly be what happens. Oh, that we do have banlings coming down. Now the hatchery dun, dun, is starting dun, dun, to get dun, dun. very, very low. 300 hit points, dun, dun, 200. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. And uh, very nice job by Symbol so far. Oh. To only pull a couple of units off and make sure he keeps a couple of live to still continue attacking the hatchery. Looks like it will finally be saved just Ooh. at the very end. 50 Ooh. hit points, <laughs> and it survives. I, I was going to say that actually could have been handled a little little bit better by Symbol. Obviously, it was breaking off off in different directions, but sending one on attack move onto a Baneling um, would have been probably the best possible outcome. Of course, uh, Transfusion is going to come down. That will eventually regenerate some health, but it is going to be super low health for a while. If uh, Symbol comes back, he might be able to take it out, but we do have nine Mutalisks hitting the skies now for Boom. And uh, almost a couple of queens caught out in the open there as they were transferring over. But with the bailings and Roach's symbols going to be able to hold on to his hatchery and the queens that were sitting around to defend it. First four infestors popping up now. And uh, there are a few Roaches on the field for him. But of course, Mutalisks are out and uh, swinging around. And this is kind of interesting. Pum Pum not making a lot of times when you see players go for Spire in ZVC, they'll make about six to eight Mutalisks and uh, decide to uh, move out, try and do whatever damage they can, and then kind of go from there. Looks like they're just going to try and DPS down oh. the, uh, the Queens, but a couple do get caught with Oh growth. no, is he going to even get the Queen? No, he doesn't. Transfusion goes down. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Fungal going down on the few Lings that are there as well. Boom, boom. Uh, walked right into that. I can't believe he didn't get that Queen. That sucks for him, but he did not want to waste any time uh, for Spore Crawlers to actually be placed up all over the place. He is actually going to kill one Infestor, which is nice, but down to only four Mutas of those original ten that he built. Yeah, so it looks uh, like six, a couple more. Yeah, but he lost four Mutas to yeah. take out one Infestor, essentially, yeah. and that is not worth it in any way, shape, or form. He did bait out uh, a little bit of Fungals, but you, I mean, at that point, you want to kill a base, essentially. I mean, you want to be able to sh completely shut down a base, kill a couple of Queens and a bunch of Workers, and then you yourself transition over to uh, Infestor Roach, but that just didn't happen for Boom Boom. Even though he he is a little bit ahead in supply right now. Symbol's position is quite good. Yeah, another Muta actually goes down to that Spore Crawler, and that's that's why he wanted to attack so quickly, is to basically not give Symbol a ton of time to throw those up. But now, uh, Boom is actually pulling ahead in supply. Now that he switched gears back to Roaches, obviously they're two supply at a time, and they're pretty cheap, so they do boost that supply count pretty quickly. So a couple of Changelings coming out way on this side of the map. That's kind of interesting. They're going to have a long walk before they actually are of any use, but um, yeah, he's got the, the long trek of the changeling. Go! Someday. Go, young man. He'll be a real... You have two and a half minutes yeah. of life. <laughs> Do with it what you will. Um, but yeah, Pathogen Glenn's actually coming up for Boom now, so he's going to be catching up a bit. Changeling nearing. It's getting closer to Symbol's base. Let's see what happens when these changes. Oh, changeling's actually meeting each other. <laughs> and they can't kill each other, <laughs> they so... They can't kill each other. All, All right. right, so they're going to get some nice scouting done, but uh, Symbol is actually scouting with a roach, scout roach. 
Yep. Not, not bad. Both players have uh, Hydralisks added in as well. Uh, let's see where the upgrades are at. Uh, he does have plus two weapons. That's a symbol. Pung Pung, on the other hand, no upgrades at all. Plus one just finishing up for him. All right, so both players still just posturing. No big attacks happening at the moment. Symbol is starting to move with a lot of roaches and infestors, I'm sure. Yep, there are those infestors and hydralisks taking out an overlord on the way, so Boong knows exactly what to expect. He's actually moving around the top side with his own roach force, so Symbol will most likely come back to try and respond to this. Actually, I don't like this move from Boong because it's going to sandwich him if Symbol does come home. He does kill a queen out in the open like that. He's going to go straight for the workers. I'm surprised Symbol did not pull workers already. This is crazy. All right. Right. Well, uh, oh, it's, it's not coming home either. No, uh, what's going around the side? More roaches. So we have, may have a little bit of a crazy base trade on our hands. Symbol actually being very indecisive at the moment. Now finally starting to commit forward, but he is losing a lot back at home. I can't believe he did not go back to respond to that. I really thought he was going to just walk in there and smash everything. The in, uh, infestors are actually out now for Boong and dropping fungals all over the place. This is still a very big force from Symbol. Those hydralists need to be getting in there and not, you know, not focusing down overlords but actually trying to do some damage while uh, his entire base is attacked back at home infestors from boom trying to do some kiting with the fungals and infested terrans those are going to do some decent damage but uh, roach worm going down now infestation pit is right there but symbol does not have anything to defend this at home and look at this 72 64 supply cap now for boom but he doesn't need it he's over here killing everything still oh nice burrow there from symbol though yeah and it looks like he finally will be able to start turning the tide no reinforcements coming in from pung pung so he will still fight this back even with the good uh, burrow micro there uh, from Symbol to do that over and over again. But now he's losing his tech structures. At the same time, he's done quite a bit of damage. And that supply was actually 50 ahead for Pung Pung not too long ago, but he just started losing all of his workers and his overlords overhead. He needs about a billion overlords uh, before that supply cap finally does finish up and he can start producing more units. This is just bizarre to me. Symbol still is going to be able to fight this back because he did more damage uh, in the right places basically over at Boong's base. But uh, look at that. Workers killed way more workers killed for Boong, but Symbol is actually doing all the tech damage uh, that he needs to do, and he's going to kill this lair off. There is a huge base actually for Boong, though. If he actually goes home, this is a spine crawler forest with quite a lot of roaches. I think I saw an infester or two, maybe not actually, but uh, Symbol's not probably not going to be able to crack that shell quite as easily. But it is 100 supply now to uh, to just 59, and uh, I am a little bit surprised that Boong Boong didn't decide to kill any of the hatcheries. He did a nice job of picking <laughs> off some of the tech, but uh, man, he's going to try and get this oh. evolution chamber continuing to burrow, but uh, Symbol can sit there for a while now because this position is actually quite bad for uh, Pung Pung at the moment. Yeah, his hatch, that's the same bleeding hatch that we saw from the very beginning yeah. when the Ling's got it down to 40 HP, but uh, these are a lot of spine crawlers. Obviously, he doesn't have really anything besides that, though. Can we look at the unit count? See, actually, drones 12 against 15. <laughs> oh my god. That's uh, pretty drastic, but of course, Symbol does have more hatcheries to work with. He does still have quite a lot of minerals and stuff as well, so uh, he should be able to start building back. No gas income at all, though. Both players, actually, only Symbol rebuilding drones at the moment. Boom Boom is not. He's building six investors instead. And Boom Boom's losing a lot of uh, units as well. On the way out, just lost another four roaches there. Uh, what does he have left? Unfortunately, none of his remaining mutalists. That actually would have been very helpful right now if he had had any oh, mutalists available to him. Uh, it's 56 supply to 100 and 10 at the moment. Symbol's continuing to drone up. He's still sitting on two bases, even though the minerals were uh, pretty low over at his main. He still has his natural, which has uh, a decent number of minerals, enough uh, for him to be able to support his economy for a while and then eventually get up to a third base. So I understand why Boong built uh, six infestors, because if he is uh, you know, going to be under attack here soon, obviously fungal growth and infested swarm eggs are going to keep you alive a lot longer. They're really good survival mechanics, but he's still not building any you know, many drones. He's still sitting at only 15, while Symbol's at 29. Ten changelings on the field for for Boong. I hope those actually get some use, but... Uh, <laughs> Changeling army, go! Go, changelings! <laughs> um, but Symbol, I mean, Boong actually is not in a position to attack Symbol at all here, with a huge force still standing. All right, well, um, yeah, I mean, this is this is clearly in Symbol's favor at the moment. He's looking like he wants to take a second game in a row here for TSL, but uh, Pung Pung, you know, I mean, if he gets lucky and Symbol just decides to suicide against him, maybe he can start to turn things around, but I just don't see Symbol doing that. I see him being comfortable sitting back, taking a third base, maxing out, and then finally trying to assault his opponent. Yeah, Boong is going to have to figure out some game plan, plans for expansion, um, 17 drones, not going to cut it at the moment, and 
and Symbol really, as soon as he feels comfortable, he can start scouting out again. He doesn't really have good coverage on uh, Boong's side of the map, but that's a huge fungal. He's going to catch all these roaches so far from home with no Infestor support. Those are all going to die. Bye bye. And Boong is in massive trouble. He does have that Infestor squad. And he made a bit earlier. Fungals are going to be able to be dropped forever on these roaches. Could actually end up killing quite a lot of them, uh, but uh, Symbol does still have the infrastructure to fall back on to remax, and Boom does not. So there is the GG. Wow, nice fungal on all the infestors there at the yeah. end, actually, from Symbol locking those down. And uh, two games in a row from Symbol. Well done. They are now up on Prime. Two games to one.